Hey, someone told me something crazy today. They said it's okay to be happy. Sometimes. I guess. This next one's for her. Oh, Lord of mercy, I'm begging you, please. I'm feeling drained, I need love. You charge me up like electricity. Don't stop my heart with your love. There's a No. I'm scared you're going to bite me. I would never bite you. I would never bite anybody. I may be a vampire, but I'm also a vegan. Psh, you wouldn't understand. I had no idea. No one does. People think they know everything about us because we're vampires. But we're different. We have feelings. Really? Like what? Like love. Oh, Lord of mercy, I'm begging you, please. I'm feeling drained, I need love. You charge me up like electricity. Don't stop my heart with your love. Can I come inside? Yeah, you can come wherever you want. There's a mm -hmm. energy when you hold it, when you touch me. I guess. One and all, welcome to the latest, the greatest edition of Nick's Nonfiction. Here with your host, Nick Munez. Today on the show, debriefing Oigi Goigas. Oigi Goigas's One Billion Wicked Thoughts. One Billion. Most people aren't particularly interested in contributing to the scientific process. Who wants to keep a daily journal recording every time she yawns? Who wants to get injected with radioactive cobalt sticking his head into a hole the size of a water bucket? What kind of person wants to do boring tasks for trivial money? Fortunately for science, there is such a person. The graduate student. Haha, <laughs> so you need a master's degree? You're gonna pay us four years of tuition and work for free. You know, I wrote my senior thesis about how it's basically indentured servitude. They gave me a D on that paper. That's not even a bit. So for the past four years, I've been doing my independent research. I'm about to end this man's whole career. And I got my master's in Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. This did, that was a bit. <laughs> Quote, geneticists use fruit flies. Endocrinologists use guinea pigs. Molecular biologists use mice. For behavioral scientists, it's the college student. Dude, we did all kinds of studies. I remember them wasting hours of my time. The test you took doesn't matter. We just wanted to see if you would recycle the paper. I chose to be a guard in our mini Stanford prison experiment. I banged all the prisoner bussy. Are you challenging me? Black Shaggy in the shower. Watch out! This whole book is getting the slave students to sift through internet porn data. But if people are such a problem, how can we possibly observe the behavior of the full spectrum of humankind? Fortunately, amazingly, there's an unprecedented new source of behavioral data, one that reveals the unfiltered activities of a stunning diversity of people. This is the world's largest experiment on human behavior. The Internet. We've been tricked. We've been backstabbed. Is the Internet a spy device? We're going to hear some creepy stories about unhinged sex fiends. I'm going to have to break out my weeaboo voice. Hentai. I have a fire kink. I think it's really hot. Got an amputee kink? Check out Porn Nub. What do you call someone with all of the kinks? A jerk-off-all-trade. 
We'll be right back. I know what you came here to do. Now bust it open, let me see you get it. It's going to About the author, Oigi Goigas, the most interesting thing about him is probably that name. He's a neurologist and a pervert, so I kind of want to take this time to show you where the ideas come from. Not since Alfred Kinsley in the 1950s has there been such a revolution in our knowledge of what is really going on in the bedroom. Alfred Kinsley, American sexologist, biologist, professor of etymology and zoology, I think we're crossing a little too many lines there. What? Friggin' sexology plus zoology equals bestiology? That's why I'm an economist. From the New York Times, Kinsey continued to correspond with King until 1954, and she points out that Kinsey also corresponded with Fritz von Balsweck, a German pedophile and former Nazi who was tried for murder. So, like, they talked to the worst people, the biggest scoundrels for this book. But how cool is that guy's name? Fritz von Balsack? You sussy baka. <laughs> he was a pedo. Ew. So I think vampires exist. That's going to be my Illuminati take for the day. Like, people who are pedophiles were touched as a kid. There's some energies being exchanged out here, dog. And kinks are part of that. My biggest fantasy is to have sex under hypnosis. I'm a transsexual. Holy crap! What's Vlad the Impaler's kink? Ass to mouth. <laughs> My girlfriend likes it when I dress up as a clown when we have sex. I think it's a Stephen kink. <laughs> we'll be right back with the show. Billion Wicked Thoughts by Oigi Gogas. Thrown in a chaw dog. It's a long one. Rule 34. This is where he starts the story. Heinrich Hertz built the very first radio antenna in 1886. He wanted to test it for the existence of electromagnetic waves as predicted by a Scottish theoretical James Clark Maxwell. Hertz became the first person to successfully transmit and receive a radio signal, simultaneously proving Maxwell correct and inaugurating the field of radio physics. So we're not going to do this today. We're talking about sex. Go listen to the Patreon episode about electronics. Quote, Unlike the origins of electromagnetic frequency, the origins of desire remain mysterious and controversial. There's no consensus on which sexual interests are normal, abnormal, pathological. Scientists can't even agree on the purpose of the female orgasm. Yeah, if it even exists. <laughs> or whether sexual fantasies are innocent or dangerous. So, like, I'm not saying anything's wrong today. We're just exploring the ideas. He's even saying scientists can't prove that it's bad to have a kink. I think I'm a little more vanilla or in touch with God. That's That'll be my take for the day. Because I've read, like, King of the Pervs, William Burrow. He was saying he wants to see what's on the end of everyone's fork. That was his phrase, but, like... He talked about raping children, the Yage letters. Don't read that unless you want to lose sleep for a week. <laughs> and that's from Alfred Ginsberg to William Burroughs. So CIA guys are making you perverted. That's going to be another theme. Quote, Are you willing to jot down answers to questions like, Have you ever felt attracted to your pet schnauzer? And most people are saying no. That's why we have to spy on people to get honest data. So, you know, he's... Just priming the argument that it's okay to, for the NSA to exist. <laughs> and I think that's true, that people are attracted to their dogs. Like, girls are just being honest on Twitter. You don't have to spy on us. Oh my god, is it just me, or can anybody not be left in a room with a Great Dane? 
You want to fuck animals. Like, that used to be my joke. How come white women want to have sex with dogs? They literally do. <laughs> it's not even a joke anymore. This is a pre-internet study. Kinsey and a small group of research assistants interviewed thousands of subjects in person, asking 521 questions about a tremendous variety of sexual interests, including a bondage, bestiality, and silk stockings. Even by today's standards, the results were shocking. Before Kinsey, homosexuality was believed to be exceedingly rare, yet more than one-third of the men reported having a homosexual experience. What? Nah, dude, one-third? It's weird, that kid who's like, remember when you had a sleepover and you would make out with your friend? No. That's you. Industrial society. Get off of TikTok. Where was this quote? So before Kinsey, homosexuality was thought to be rare. Women were believed to possess a very low sex drive. Yeah, right. And more than half of women reported masturbating. <laughs> Premarital sex, extramarital affairs, oral sex all occurred far more frequently than anyone had suggested. So I, I don't really think we're the first generation to eat ass. In the 50s, they were on it. Sidetracks to another story. Just think about your grandma eating ass. In Jurgen's experiment, five young men and five young women entered a small room one at a time. They did not know one another before the experiment, and they were kept isolated before they entered the room. So, I'm just thinking about every Korean war veteran got gonorrhea. They probably got banged by a ladyboy in Saigon. <laughs> Sorry, the study. Once they entered, the boys and girls, they were free to do whatever they liked. At the end of the experiment, the subjects left the room one at a time. But what made this experiment so interesting was the room itself was pitch dark. The subjects couldn't see one another. They didn't know one another, and they knew they would not learn one another's identities. <laughs> in other words, seven minutes in heaven. They experienced complete and total anonymity. So what did these anonymous strangers do? At first they talked, some touched, more than half of the subjects hugged one another. A third of the subjects ended up kissing... And one of the men kissed five different girls. <laughs> so this is called the Jurgen experiment. The internet is a super Jurgen. You're in a dark room by yourself. Nobody's watching. Except for five nerds behind two-way glass. Or five NSA nerds. <laughs> what are you going to look up? Our first internet case study comes from a webcomic designer. In 2003, Peter was a shy 16-year-old when a friend emailed him a reimagining of Calvin and Hobbes. In it, Calvin and Hobbes were having enthusiastic sex with Calvin's mother. Peter felt pretty traumatized. He writes in an online forum, If there was Calvin and Hobbes porn, I figured there must be porn of anything and everything. <laughs> so you know, neckbeards have invented Rule 34. If it exists, there must be porn of it. I'm thinking of that traumatizing story. One time me and my sisters were to, trying to play Tetris on Google and we clicked a link and there was this like hunched over guy with the Groucho Marx glasses and he was naked. I will never forget that moment. <laughs> Quote, Today Rule 34 thrives as sacred lore on blogs, YouTube videos, Twitter feeds, and social network sites. It's frequently used as a verb, as in, I Rule 34 to Paula Abdul and Simon Cowell on the judging table. I Rule 34 to AOC and Kamala Bang on 1-6. By 1997, there were 900 porn sites. Today, it's over 2.5 million. <laughs> Quote, it's true that visual pornography is mostly a male interest, but surging numbers of women are also using the internet to satisfy their own erotic tastes. So you see the whole arc of the chapter. We were able to put messages up into the air frequency, and we use it for porn. She males and prom dresses, Twilight slash Edward and Jacob. This is from dogpile.com on May 2010. Black meat on white streets. Show me the thug shaker. Wives caught cheating on camera. Best romance novels with alpha heroes. Kendra Wilkinton sex tapes. Spanking stories. Free gay video tube. Jake Gyllenhaal without shirt. Girls gone wild orgies. Jersey Shore sex cartoons. <laughs> I don't know. Not that bad considering like nine year olds today are looking for balloon sitting, cake farting sounding. Where does this diversity come from? Where does one person seek out spanking stories and someone else seek out she males in prom dresses? Why are your own erotic preferences different from your partner's? These questions are at the very heart of our investigation. Back to that research. Of the 400 million searches we collected, about 55 million, so 15%, 
or search for some kind of erotic content. These sexual searches represented desires of roughly 2 million people, two-thirds from the United States. For example, we categorized hot Latino ass, bootylicious babes, and sexy guys with bubble butts as example of interest in butts. So that was a confusing ass quote. I included it to show you that statistics is bullshit. <laughs> like they they just said they put bubble butts in the same thing as dude butts. So th what do you fucking, you have to separate the gay from the straight. I don't know. It's basically eugenics online and we call it sociology. <laughs> He says one of the crazy things they found was that people would be on a different topic by the end of their search session. So, you know, you go into those holes and all those. Just how diverse is the full list of homo sapiens sexual interest as expressed on the Internet? Not very diverse, it turns out. Just 20 different interests account for 80% of all searches. That's rather remarkable. Well, less than two dozen interests, you can satisfy the desire of the entire population. So he's saying you could put all of humanity in 25 different sexual boxes. And then the 26th box is these rule 34 creeps. So most people are just ass tits, whatever. And then there's dudes looking for sexy funeral directors, erotic stories about lumpy potatoes. I don't know. You'll find results. But I'm saying most people aren't looking for this stuff. It's like trans. Less than 1% of people are trans, but this stuff gets over-propagated. So my presumption back in Chapter 1, we're still in it. There's more weird content than people even like. It's almost like this Rule 34 shit is there to move you closer to sexual perversion. It's more than anybody would want. Literally, like the Pornhub Top 20 of the week... It's the same guys beating off to that shit. And then there's so few people into that weird stuff. Like if you studied Elsagate, it's basically that, but in the adult sex world. I don't know, even though the rules exist, you got fucking armpit fetishes, misophilia I learned about in this book. It's a dirt fetish. People have like rotting fetishes, coprophilia, poop fetish. So even though all that exists, we're in the golden age of kink. 99% of people prefer to watch the same handful of videos. Chapter 2. What do we really like? If you just look at the stats, you go, Anime? Devo? Overwatch porn? <laughs> people are freaks, right? But the truth is that it's really only half a percent. Wolfgang likes to look at images of female derrieres. He prefers certain poses, bent over legs splayed, leaning on her knuckles. He likes these images so much that he is willing to pay for the privilege of looking at them. Sometimes he pays several times a day. This might seem excessive. We're in the world of OnlyFans. This book is outdated. I have a bigger take here. Wolfman, never trust a tit man. You gotta be searching for the perfect ratio DNA ass to waist. <laughs> In a study done on macaques at Duke University Medical Center, all of the macaque monkeys would trade their fruit juice for just a peek at a photo of the female perennia, the chick's gooch, and the monkey gave up all of their juice for it. <laughs> you get the analogy here? It's a simping thing. Who's going to pay for porn? Quote, the most popular pay sites featuring adult videos, including Brezzers, Bing Bros, Reality Kings, typically attract an audience at around 75% male. That's actually lower than I thought. Of course, that does not mean that one of the four visitors is a woman, though a significant... So what are they? What are you saying? But when it comes to actually paying for porn, the gender gap widens into an abyss. According to CC Bill, the billing service most commonly used by the online adult industry, only 2% of all subscriptions to pornography sites are made on credit cards with a woman's name. There we go. So it's 98%. And this isn't huge news. Like, you'll be happy to know in the next quote where your tax dollars are going. The National Science Foundation, very academic, <laughs> is a federal government agency that funds approximately 20% of all basic research in American universities in every field of science and engineering, including the mapping of the genome. Its board of directors is appointed by the President of the United States and confirmed by the Senate. 
so other institutions have a greater influence on American science. But in 2009, a certain activity was stealing so many hours from employees at the NSF headquarters in Washington, D.C., that the agency's inspector had launched a formal inquiry. The activity? Surfing internet porn. The National Science Foundation... <laughs> Dudes are just looking at porn all day. One man was on a 331-day porn streak at work. <laughs> NSFW, not for him. Bro, and we're paying his salary. They said, like, yeah, pe people were beating off in the office. <laughs> Everybody's too busy watching porn. I don't know, man. Does it even cross your mind to ogle while you're at work? I think the bigger takeaway is that most people aren't actually doing work. <laughs> We're giving money to wankers at the federal level. Main part of the chapter, what are the dudes searching for? After Big Butt, one of the rubber runners up was age. Yeah, I don't think men are looking up. Give me a hot, empowered woman. <laughs> They're putting big ass in the search bar. Barely legal. 2007, Pornhub launched, um, and it was the fastest website in history to reach 50 million followers. I don't know if you guys have been following this. Mind Geek, who was financed by the CIA, owner of Pornhub, they were just sold to a Canada, like a financing vanguard, a couple months ago. So I think the Canadians are about to put out some weird porny. In just two years, Pornhub became the most heavily trafficked adult video site in the world, attracting more than 10 million visitors each day. Though it had an anything-goes attitude in the earliest days, the now caution-minded Pornhub offloads quicker content, such as fisting and golden showers, onto its sister tube sites and completely prohibits videos depicting rape, incest, or bestiality. So he's like, it all starts out the same, and then it changes like those individual porn searches before. you got to moderate your meat. Otherwise, you might get lured into the dark web. Here's Brad Fowler, a 21-year-old college student from Boston. He started out looking at women, and then he quickly found a kink. You feel like you can learn something from them, and there's also an aspect of desiring or something that you haven't seen. What? Talk to a woman, dude. <laughs> It's easier to hook up with a hot college freshman than a hot 40-year-old with a kid in a minivan, so there's a sense of accomplishment involved. It's not moms I can fucks, it's moms I'd like to fuck. So this is the problem. It's just a, a bunch of over-rationalizing. You gotta moderate your meat, bro. Become self-aware. You know, I like this MILF porn because it's, it's kind of, like, real. You're beating off to a fucking screen. <laughs> well, it's okay to watch chicks with dicks. It says chicks in the title. You're gay. <laughs> Americans love MILFs. Let's take it back to that. I don't know. Thanks to Stifler's mom. Here's the search results from a kid who got obsessed with oral. Mature deep throat movies. Old lady oral movies. Granny cum. <laughs> Grandma anal movies. Star Wars Lego game cheats. Teen deep throat movies. Mature adult movies. So like halfway through, he wasn't even horny anymore. He was playing Lego Star Wars. <laughs> he didn't even want to come. Like when you take time off porn, the cart comes after the horse. You get a boner, and then you whack off. The internet lures you in with a soft dick, and then you waste hours of your time. Dude. <laughs> am I actually horny, or am I just bored? That's the axiom. Here's a funny quote. There's a lot of interest in older ladies from the Brits, because when a lot of them were schoolboys, they were spanked or slapped or pinched by a school madam. This explains a long-time adult industry. Okay, so he's going Freud on us now. Here's another tip. Dudes, if you're not getting laid, just go above in age. <laughs> this isn't difficult. He had a whole subchapter called the Mythic Peel of Skinny. So nobody's searching for rail-thin models. But at the same time, ain't nobody watching the progressive Victoria's Secret fat fashion show. <laughs> like, it's a balance. Quote, there are more than 1,672 large breast websites in the Alexa adult list. Ogie, he's going down the foot rabbit hole here. Long story short, nobody knows why dudes like it. So, like, he was doing all that Freud stuff before. Quote, so if men are attracted to feet because of an innate reception to foot cues, was Freud mistaken in his belief that a foot obsession is related to submissiveness? 
You know, your mom used to wear sandals. The Oedipusian lore. Go do some more coke, Freud. I have a personal beef with Ludacris. This is why I'm doing this quote. Searches for women's shoes, pantyhose, and stockings are also highly correlated with sexual searches for feet. I definitely love girls with beautiful feet, admits rap star Ludacris. Sometimes she could trick me just wearing boots, not even showing her feet. But then I see the feet and it's a wrap. <laughs> Give me the red middle bit off with clothes. Bend over to the front. Touch your toes. That's a ludicrous line. That guy sold his soul. You're going to have to do a deep dive on Ludacris. I got to find a book on him for you guys. Whatever. That guy's obsessed with feet. <laughs> We're going to end this on an interesting quote. Comedian Ron White describes a conversation with his cousin Ray. I told him we were all gay, buddy. And Ray goes, that's bullshit, man. You don't like porn? Yeah, I love porn. Oh, and do you like to watch scenes with two women? No. I'll watch a man and a woman making love. Do you like the guy to have a flaccid penis? No. I like a big, hard, throbbing cock. So this is Ron White's joke. See, you like dick because blah. And they even did an eye-tracking study where guys look at dicks more than girls. (laughs) Dudes would click on thumbnails that have dicks in it. There's misconceptions on both sides. Women, they just like a security thumbnail. (laughs) Man buys woman house in this porno. Chapter 3, Male Desire. This quote slips into the transhumanism side. We're all going to be making love to computers. When biologists tried to figure out which visual cues evoked sexual behavior in male owl, they found out that roosters would exhibit mating behaviors even when they exposed to artificial hen's comb. I said owl, it was supposed to be fowl. About half of all roosters attempted copulation with an artificial chicken head. Okay? I have a whole fucking thing about this in my book. The fucking Cambridge Analytica think tank psychologists are way ahead of us. They're just waiting until we beat our dicks off our bodies to porn for the next hundred years, and then comes the sex robots. Like, since nobody's fighting transhumanism, why don't we just turn off the porn now so they give us the sex robots? (laughs) Those aren't my beliefs, but... You see, it's just like a slow drip feed of cum. Soviet propaganda. He had a whole thing in the book about how America is a bunch of consumers that just like to cum. But uh, our propaganda was right about them, a bunch of commie bastards. Like, we are in the prison of pleasure. Brave New World, and they are in 1984. What do we got? The male brain is designed to be more visually responsive to sexual stimuli than the female brain. Male arousal itself relies on two structures located in the subcortex, the amygdala and the hypothalamus. So it's much more lizard brain. It's about view, visual cues. He starts interviewing some weebs about anime. The absolute territory is the band of skin visible between a woman's skirt and the top of her socks, or even more tantalizing between a mini skirt and thigh-high stockings. The socks and skirts are usually darker shades than the skin. Therefore, the skin is light at the end of a dark tunnel, gleaming in an aura of brilliance. Fans spend hours measuring the ratio of skirt to skin to sock length. Of Zatari Ryuki images... <laughs> According to one blogger's laborious calculations, the most sublime ratio for skirt length, skin to length of socks, is 4 to 1 to 2.5. He says, Memorizing this formula is as important as knowing the first 30 digits of pi. So fucking useless. (laughs) That's how obsessed some of these dudes... Bro. Oogie Gogas. He doesn't take it in the cool direction going, you know, their sacred geometry. That's why dudes like ass. Instead, he's going, "Mm, sociology. In India, the belly is a common male obsession. In Victoria times, ankles were considered highly erotic. Salvador Dali claimed to be aroused by a woman's earlobe. (laughs) Thus, culture does seem to play some role in determining what part of the body the male brain triggers targets. (laughs) So no Fibonacci sequence action. He's just going cultural on us. All Pornhub had to do was make millions of boy twinks to the front page, and now a bunch of dudes are gay. <laughs> like, cultural? No, dude, it's all mental. 
culture is not your friend. It's very easily subverted. This quote went one of two ways. You could take it biological or sociological. Breasts, hips, butts. Researchers have a name of the oversized parts of the female anatomy that men find so enchanting. Ornamentation. You might think that ornamentation is appealing because it signals a woman's current fertility. But according to many scientists, that's not quite right. Instead, the shapely curves of female ornamentation indicate how many years of healthy child laboring remain in the entire woman's life. So that's what I'm saying. We all pick up on the shit biologically. You could tell by how bad it chicks and issues by how many kids she could pump out. It's like all this other crap, feet, ankles, bellies. It's just what your culture is fetishizing. So if you break away from the culture, <laughs> it's just funny that dudes are beating off the feet. This perverted ass neckbeard psychologist. He spent his life studying sex. It's not that hard. Well, let him go. He winds up making some pretty based arguments. If male desire software was designed to prefer one night stands, men should prefer sex with adult women over adolescents, since adolescents have re relatively low fertility. So, like, my thing about bang old women before, if I just really cared about sex and men were sex obsessed, I would just be banging easy chicks all the time. But literally, as a dude, he's right. He's going, you just want a thick young honey. <laughs> That's what it's about. And then you want to be loved and all that gay shit. Quote, Though men exhibit a general preference for youth and long-term relationships, the male brain is designed to flexibility to pursue both long-term and short-term relationships. Aww. So yeah, we could switch it on and off. But I, like women, it costs me nothing to have sex with a bunch of chicks. Obviously, you have to hedge your bets. And we're in a retarded-ass society, so women don't have anyone supporting them unless they could get a man to commit to a government contract. Ending the chapter. In many ways, tube sites like Pornhub are technological innovations that are perfectly designed to appeal to the male sexual brain. They offer unlimited visual stimuli that can be easily searched by body part, age, weight. Male desire is instantly activated by visual cues and is directed towards immediate action, in particular behavior leading towards orgasm. Once male desire is triggered, it does not easily subside. As comedian Louis C.K. put it, if you showed me my mother's decapitated head while I was fucking, I would tell you, we're going to have to talk about this just as soon as I come. <laughs> chapter 4. Female Desire. This chapter was mostly about that FSU study. It doesn't have a cool name like the Gerber 7 Minutes in Heaven. You get five undercover girls, five undercover boys to approach the opposite sex. They ask three questions. Would you date me? Would you go home with me? Would you sleep with me? The male responses go, 50% would date, 70% would go home, 75% would go to bed. And to me, that means 25% of men aren't able to sniff out a scam. <laughs> no chick. Anyway, the female responses are the exact opposite. 60% are going on the date, 5% are going home, and 0% put out. But I like to look at these statistics with the positive side. This means men, at any moment, there's a 5% chance that a girl will go home with you. And you know statistics are bullshit because 5% that go home with you, 4% will sleep with you. 5% <laughs> chance. Let's go. I don't know. Female desire in this chapter. They like wasting time. <laughs> Wasting time, I mean small talk over physical pleasure. Girls aren't motivated by sex, they're motivated by security. Female desire, maximum security, minimum blowjobs. Maximum security prison. <laughs> this chapter got interesting because he was talking about pharma companies. And they think men and women are the same because you got to treat them as a spreadsheet. Pfizer started prescribing women... Phazo, phazo di tetracines. It actually said phazo twice. <laughs> it's the thing in Viagra that makes the blood clot in your penis. So they're like, man, let's give it to some women. Ruptured blood vessels in their reproductive system. I don't know. You got a credit to the author here. He's describing how not just Viagra, but all pharmaceuticals negate the mind-body connection. He was going deep. 
You're supposed to be in control of your boners. Everything is mental. Once you take a blue chew, Pfizer is now the middleman in your body. You gotta ask Pill Daddy if you could get a fucking hard on. Stop. Females, they have a stronger mind-body connection. And men are... Chicks are still chugging antidepressants, so nobody's right here. But you gotta kinda get in touch with your vagina sometimes. He dropped a Joe Rogan bit. Men versus women desire. He's talking about the 72 virgins. Ass is so strong, there are dudes willing to blow themselves up for a highly unlikely possibility of ass in another dimension. There are no chicks alive willing to blow themselves up for penis. <laughs> it's a good point. That's probably from a chimps in outer space when Rogan was woke. The most sociopathic of women just see men as cum basters. So I'm saying it goes both way. When men realize how psychotic women can be, that's when we're really going to get the artificial womb tech finished. Within a week. This was a dank point. He's proven how women have a negativity bias. Evolutionary, they have to choose a safe male. In a love letter study, a majority of women used the phrase, I miss you, where men instead would say, I look forward to seeing you. <laughs> Like bitches are always putting themselves up in a tower guarded by dragons. This quote rules, Men are more likely to suffer from autism, which is frequently characterized as a social disorder based on an inability to take in the point of view of others. One prominent research characterizes autism as a consequence of hypermasculinization. <laughs> I'm saying women pop pills like candy this whole chapter. More dudes than ever are autistic. And you could channel it to watch twink porn or read a book a week. Like, girls think it's quirky to be mentally ill. Oh, oh these glasses are non-prescription. Meanwhile, I'm stuck being obsessed with gun mechanics and extreme cleanliness. Quote, In the 19th century, Jane Austen took the romance to its greatest literary heights. Reselling romance authors today include Nora Brooks, Jackie Collins, Stephanie Myers, but the modern structure of the romance is still attributed to the 1972 novel The Flame and the Flower by Kathleen Woodwiss. The classic romance has been through 42 printings and is still in print today. Here's the summary of the book and its cover. We might need some sexy music here. The Flame, a lusty adventurer married to the sea. Captain Brandon Bringhamhan counts... <laughs> Brandon Bringham perils when he is abducted by the beautiful fugitive from tumulus London dockside, but no power on earth can compel him to relinquish his exquisite prize, for he is determined to make the sapphire-eyed love his woman, and to carry her off far uncharted realms of sensuous, passionate love. Let's skip ahead to the steamy part. He eased the head of his cock in, then waited for me to relax before thrusting the rest of the way inside. I moaned. I couldn't help it, Jeremy. I gasped for the rhythm of his fucking. If you're tired of the line, why don't you just stop? Hush, let me fuck you. <laughs> this is what women read? And uh, don't you come, you little fuck slut. <laughs> Jesus, I'd really tick them off. Yes, Jeremy. Yes, whatever you say. <laughs> works in the bedroom I don't know if it works with sexy funny music <laughs> yeah learned helplessness it's a turn on I'm not blaming women for anything this chapter I'm just saying admit that you're hornier and lazier than us I read all the time I can't imagine reading romance books 300 pages a day week after week like I'm saying <laughs> read the right books erotic novels and videos they're there to make you horny not to make you think this was a super interesting thing. They crunched the most frequent male characters from 15,000 Harlequin novels. Doctor, cowboy, boss, prince, rancher, knight, surgeon, king, bodyguard, sheriff. A couple new stripper outfits I need to add to the rotation there. I show up at a bachelor party in chainmail armor. <laughs> need some help taking this off, ladies. If I can crunch the data further, the most common plot line in these 15,000 books, The Taming of the Coconut. It's just a dumb plot device. It's the same thing as The Taming of the Shrew. So I'll take it a top notch up on you guys. Shakespeare, 
was doing satire of the Harlequin novels. Like all this shit is a comedy making fun of it's a satire. Usually the women has to tame the guy to be done with his adventure. And in the taming of the shrew, a guy wants to marry this hot chick, but his older sister isn't married. So he's making fun of all the novels. He has to convince a dumb guy to marry the older sister so he can marry the hot chick. <laughs> Shakespeare was like the first South Park. Chapter 5, Conclusion. There are more than 26 million porn sites. The online porn industry makes over $3,000 per second. One in four search queries are about porn. More than a third of all downloads are porn. One in five men watch porn at work. <laughs> This is the real epidemic. 20% of men are watching porn at work. I've definitely had coworkers doing that. I think deeper in this epidemic, it's a loneliness thing. Sunday is the highest traffic day for all these sites. Like, dudes nowadays are just hiring hookers to talk to them. It's the saddest shit ever. We may have high-speed internet porn. Humans need community. Now that we've finally seen what's on the end of a billion forks, we can draw some conclusions. Conclusions. One of the most interesting things is this. If you are a woman, then no matter what your attributes, big or skinny, A cup or double E, mother or grandmother, you are a sexual ideal and the greatest erotic fantasy for an abundance of men. As for men, some of us may have a harder time finding a sexual match. And perhaps the one we find most attractive may not reciprocate our sentiments. Sexual attraction may not always lead to long-term compatibility. So, uh, yeah, there's your uh, male privilege. But seriously, chicks, there's always a guy that will treat you as a god. But as the software of the brain has become e ever more different from the software of the past, it has increased the number of opportunities for disruptors during the neural development. Sometimes female software ends up with male components. Sometimes male software gets female components. The very gulf that separates a woman's brain from a male's brain is responsible for all the wondrous diversity of se human sexuality. You're going to have to tune in this Saturday to the Patreon. This is the Kybalian Law of Gender. We're being made dumber and asexual, and that's where all of human creativity comes from. I still want to fucking have sex with women. Maybe that's why I do this. <laughs> That's the conspiracy. And it's proven when you follow the money. Alphabet funds all these tube sites that get you to watch transsexual stuff. Oigi is saying it has this cross-generational effect. So in two generations, the lines are going to be totally blurred. An Illuminati two for one. Ending the battle of the sexes. When literary scholar Janice Radway asked the woman in a romance discussion group about male sexuality, the woman reported that they did not want to adopt male standards. They wished that men would learn to adhere to theirs. Like, I'm just taking the male side to be funny. We both got to come to the table. Yin yang, we need each other. The feminists saying, we're not going to budge an inch. That's not going to help. We both got to come for each other. Let me get spiritual at the end. Minister Muniz. Sin isn't looking up porn. I don't know. You have your vices, I have mine. That's a pretty bad justification here, but sin is its trusting yourself, thinking that it's okay to look at porn. <laughs> so, like, I'm not trying to do Roman Catholic bullshit here. Thinking that you're outsmarting porn, it's a brain trick, okay? Stop. It's bad, okay? Final quote. As American author Edward Abbey writes, Modern men and women are obsessed with the sexual. It is the only realm of primordial adventure still left to most of us. Go in the woods. Like apes in a zoo, we spend our energies on the one field of play remaining. Human lives otherwise are pretty well caged in by the walls, bars, chains, and locked gates of our industrial society. Industrial society and its future. A Billion Wicked Thoughts by Uigi Goigas. <laughs> Got the Kabbalion coming up on the Patreon. Fucking three days away. Get subscribed. Harry shit on Instagram. Free memes every single night. Also in the community tab, we got some book-related funny memes over there. Get involved. Let me get a random soundboard effect to end this episode. Perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. Yin and yang. Love you guys. Nick Muniz signing off. See you soon. Peace!